celebrate the microscopic world with us. Welcome to Flash Revision Lab. I'm your tutor, and we'll master these topics in a flash. Today we're exploring cells and microscopes, diving into eukaryotes, prokaryotes, plant and animal cells, light and electron microscopes, and calculations involving microscopes. Let's start with eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Eukaryotes are organisms like animals, plants, and fungi. They have cells which have a membrane-bound nucleus, housing their linear DNA. These cells are large, more complex and contain membrane-bound organelles, such as mitochondria and chloroplasts. Eukaryotes reproduce by mitosis or meiosis. On the other hand, prokaryotes such as bacteria have a nucleus without a membrane. Their DNA is circular, and they're smaller and much simpler than eukaryotes. Prokaryotes lack membrane-bound organelles and reproduce by binary fission. Now, let's compare plant and animal cells. Both are eukaryotic, but they have unique structures and functions. First, we'll explore the components of plant cells. They have a rigid cell wall made of cellulose that provides support. The cell membrane, found in both plant and animal cells, regulates the movement of substances in and out of the cell. Inside the cell, there's a jelly-like substance called the cytoplasm, where metabolic reactions occur. The nucleus contains genetic material and controls the cell's activities. Unique to plant cells are chloroplasts, which convert light energy into chemical energy through photosynthesis. Both plant and animal cells contain mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, producing energy through cellular respiration. Ribosomes are cellular structures responsible for protein synthesis. Lastly, plant cells have a large central vacuole for storing water, nutrients, and waste products. Animal cells also have a cell membrane, cytoplasm, nucleus, ribosome, and mitochondria. However, unlike plant cells, they don't have a cell wall or chloroplasts. Animal cells also lack the large central vacuole found in plant cells. Instead, they store water, nutrients, and waste products in various structures throughout the cell. Additionally, animal cells are typically irregularly shaped, while plant cells are more rectangular. Next up, let's examine light and electron microscopes. Light microscopes use visible light and lenses to magnify samples, making them suitable for observing live specimens. However, they have a lower resolution and magnification compared to electron microscopes. Electron microscopes use beams of electrons and electromagnetic lenses, providing much higher resolution and magnification. But they require sample preparation, like dehydration and coating, making them unsuitable for live specimens. Lastly, let's look at calculations involving microscopes. To calculate magnification, divide the size of the image by the size of the real object. To find the size of the real object, divide the size of the image by the magnification. And to calculate the size of the image, multiply the size of the real object by the magnification. Let's take an example. If the size of the image is 50 millimeters and the size of the real object is 5, the magnification would be 50 divided by 5, which gives a magnification of 10. And that's it for these topics. Thanks for joining me at Flash Revision Lab. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more rapid revision content. If you have questions or need some extra help, drop a comment below or reach out to us on our social media channels. Remember, with Flash Revision Lab, you're just a flash away from acing your exams. Until next time, happy revising!